But mm. the problem starts when I have to visit my dad's family now. I'll get punished for that. I and my mom spend the night outside the house. We couldn't be uh, allowed to mm. sleep inside the house. I used to tell people today that I'm a proud product of a loss. After losing my dad, I stood firm. I never wanted anyone to play any role, any father's role in my life. Person. So you basically accepted that I don't I have admitted, parents. I never ad you accepted. You are like, I don't I have parents. So they forgot the very same person who is now passed on. She's the person who denied me to go pay the last respect to my dad. Just went there and kneeled down. Nah. As polite as I was, she grabbed me. She said, you don't even come to my place, you no longer, like now, because your dad passed on, now my, your mom, everyone is taking advantages over you. Hola, San Bonani, Wararapo, Huye Mera, Huye Aunt, and welcome to yet another episode of I've Been Through the Most podcast right here on St. Twins TV. We are delighted to have you. Oh, yes, and thank you so much to all our new subscribers. Oh, my goodness, it feels so good to have you be part of the family. And, of course, we are officially on the road to 500K subscribers, and we know with yes. your love and your support, we can do it. We are also available on our different social media platforms right here below me. Make sure you follow, like, and keep up with everything that we are posting. Today mm -hmm. we have Murandeni Murawudzi. Uh, thank you so much for welcoming myself. Like I really love the way you pronounce myself Murawudzi. <laughs> wow. Oh, Murawudzi. Oh, you even know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thank you so much. Um, yeah. I really appreciate the um, mm. and take this as a privilege and. Mm. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate to be here. It's, it, it does make a big difference. I remember, yes. I'm a person who believes in different change and all those things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it really means a lot to my side. And um, I'm glad, I'm glad. Are we glad you're here. Yeah, yeah. Can you briefly introduce yourself to our audience? My name is Morandene Lifeline Mora Uzi. I was born and raised in Venda. Yeah, back there in the 90s, um, I grew up in villages. Like everyone, being a guy, hoping, willing, wishing to can play a role in life, be there for people, be there for my own self, and making my dreams come true. So, yeah, that's Morindini, who grew up from the villagers and being surrounded by good people mm -hmm. who ought to play their own role. Some mm -hmm. failed, some did, and at, at the end of the day, it made the difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm curious to get into your story. We're going to give you an opportunity to just tell us why you're here because nobody sits on the hot seat <laughs> unless they have been through the most. Wow. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, let me just get into the story. Uh, so here's the story of Morindini. Morindini um, was born and raised um, uh, when I was born in 1994. I was born and raised by my family's mother. And then um, by that time when I was born, during my arrival in this world, um, it happened that only to find that Marindin is prematurely born. Uh, beside that, when I was born, mom and dad were already separated, which still even today, um, I've never figured out the answers, what happened and anything else like that. But um, it seems like I have a clue because like it, it along the life happened for me to can figure out a lot of things. Besides that, after being born and raised by <coughs> at my mom's family, um, I had to can be uprised by my mom's siblings. Uh, mom, mom and my dad were from the same village. Um, mm -hmm. And then, but the thing is, um, I never had a relationship with dad. Uh, at the age of five, my mom got married, and then she had to leave me there. Mom and dad are at the very same village as I, but the thing is now um, I've been restricted to can be with my father's family, of which by growing um, along uh, under that situation, it, it rises many things to me because like um, there, were, there were people around me Mm. who were familiar, who had to play a familiar role to me, mm. but they couldn't. They couldn't do along or, or, or play their own role. What they did was 
them taking advantage over it, like um, mistreating me. Yes, I did got the mistreat from the family along the uprising when, remember for them, first five, six years I was living with mom. Your mom then left you with her family because yes, she, she then to. got remarried. So yes. she was married, so she left. Yep. And of course you didn't have a relationship with your dad. Yep. So now you were left uh, with this mom family who bad. then abused you and did not give you the care and love that you expected even though it didn't start at that time when mom left me. Yeah. Uh, what I can briefly say is that, like, um, what I've realized was that um, along uh, the um, us staying there is myself and my mom and the mm. family there. Mm. So along my mom giving birth to me, she was 15. So I think Yo. that that made a point where, according to the family, she embarrassed them because having... Giving birth, remember in the 90s, having yes. um, uh, uh, giving birth at that young age, and um, it it made or planted the um, family treatment. Then my mom mm. has never been treated the same way as her younger sister uh, since she was the firstborn of the family. So, but then it was little compared to when my mom now had to left me, and then I've realized that my mom had to leave the family just because I I, I say this. Is kind of something which was like to her side a forceful marriage because she has to excuse herself from the way she was being treated mm -hmm. there. But now the thing was that she couldn't live with me. Remember, my dad stays with the, at the very same village as I. So he couldn't want me to can be abraised uh, by someone while he's alive. Though he couldn't himself have mm -hmm. me due to the what family tension. I never knew about the family tension. I tried while so, uprising. So your dad wanted to raise yes, you? Yes, he wanted. He just couldn't because he of couldn't. the family dynamics. Yes, yes. Family so they dynamics. just could not find a common ground. It never happened that time. It never happened that way. So from my side, now it's Marendeni at the age of five, at the age of six. I'm there alone now. I see, I now know who's dead. I know where's my dad. Mm. I know where's mom. I know who's mom. Guess what? My mom is married at the same very village as I, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So now, the moment I'll visit my mom's place, no, it's fine. It's cool with the family. Mm -hmm. But the problem starts when I have to visit my dad's family now. I'll get punished for that. I'll be told not to go there. But it, it, it never sit well with my side. So... Because I remember when, when saying, like, um, I think my mom forcefully married herself, uh, uh, find herself a way out as a marriage mm -hmm. and couldn't live with me. It was like, I remember at, at some point before mom left me, um, it happened that there were family sagas there around um, the younger siblings and everything. And it happened that I and my mom spent the night outside the house. We couldn't be... Uh, allowed to mm. sleep inside the house. So that night, I spent a night with mom, mm. sleeping outside. And, you're so young. and then, like, I, I, I didn't understand what was going on. Mm. You understand? So here I have dead, but they still restrict me from going there. I understand yes. whatever tension my dad happens and dynamics my dad ever happened before my arrival. Mm. But does that have a lot to do with Marendeni? I understand between the family, yes. But where is Marendeni? Who's Marendeni there? What, what is it that I have to do with? Why can't you just allow me and everything? So it happened like that from a, at the age of five. Now I'm leaving. I'm only with my family. Everything which ought to be done by the family, I'm the guy who have to do it. Remember, I've got the same age, um, my mom, young sisters. And then after that, there are two because my mom is the firstborn. So, but everything, it ought to be done by Marendeni. Marendeni had to play a role of the family. Guess what? When my dad have to buy me Christmas clothes, I don't stay with dad, remember? Mm -hmm. He can't read my sizes. He just buy clothes, understand? After having clothes, let's say I went to my dad's place now, today I had my dad's bag. I went there, they are going to tie me money. He's going to put money in plastic and make it as belt here. I said, don't lose it. Take this money home. I'm going to just grab plastic clothes and then I go home. When I get there, as a guy who was born and raised in them villages, like when you get home, you have to give the elders, this is what I have mm. from who and mm. everything. It shows respect. Yes. Okay. So I did so. And then they would take out, what is this? No, this clothes. My dad bought me clothes. Mm. Guess what? Everyone before me have to fit those clothes. Whoever who fits the clothes, they have to take the clothes. And then whatever which is remaining, which doesn't fit them, then it belongs to me. 
guess what about the money? They will take the money and then they will go buy something for them to cook and eat. But guess what? I will still get punished for that. I ended up being used to it. Sure. I ended so it up happened enjoying. more than once when you said you ended up being used I, to it. I, I, I became used to it. I, even even like I will find a way to can go if my dad is back. I will find a way to go there knowingly that. And when I tell dad, dad, he's going to ask me like, I bought you clothes. Where are clothes? Um, they took my clothes. Why? I said, no, they fitted first before me. Mm. And then he said, okay, it's fine. I said, but why can't you take me? Why can't I stay with you? He said, mm. you won't understand. And yes, I couldn't understand by that time. I was still young enough. Yeah, but mm. but uh, it, it seems like your dad loved you. To be honest, I don't want to lie or, or um, like uh, saying like um, I'm taking side. My mom and my dad loved me. My parents loved me. Unfortunately, one thing I've noticed about my father's side was that my father's family respected my mom's family. Mm. My mom was born in a royal family. Mm. Then I'm from the villages. We, we have respect over everything. So they will understand whatever which is happening. My dad will tell, no, you will understand when you grow old. So what was happening to my side was like, I wish I would grow old and be with dad. Guess what? At the age of 10, my dad passed on. Mm. Oh. After that, or during that moment, when he passed on, I was doing my fourth grade at a primary school. My pop, dad's family, they came and asked for me. I said, um, can we, it was late around six the night. They said, can we ask him more and Lenny to come bury his father? Mm. My grand granny was in charge sure. of everything. She chased them away. Then I knew from that day that I won't bury my dad. Oh. It's fine, it happened during the burial of my dad. You know what happened? I had to, when, when cars were leaving my dad's place to the graveyard, I was sent to collect water a few kilometers away. Mm. What happened was that I had to stood mm. somewhere along the road mm. and watching those cars going Eish. by, knowing Ooh. that my dad is there. Sure. From that time, that's where I became myself. I got myself at the age of 10 after a loss. I used to tell people today that I'm a proud product of a loss. After losing my dad, I stood firm and drew boundaries, having to understand what do I need in life? Sure. I had to adjust. I had to fence myself. From that moment, I hated familiar people who were around me, who were part and parcel of people who are my bloodline. From that day, mm. I understood the so-called family. Something people don't understand or something I teach people as now a life coach is that like, there is family, there is relatives. Some of us, we don't have family, we have relatives. Family is from the word familiar. That person is there for you. Unfortunately, relatives take advantage of mm. thinking they are family. Family is a familiar person who's there. They were there around me, but mm. guess what? I was alone, but being surrounded by people. Then from that moment, I had to learn to cut people off. From that moment, I had <sighs> to understand myself. It helped me a lot to find my role in life. Because like, first thing first, the moment I knew about myself, I was born prematurely. What came to me was like, but why? Why you made it? Like, initially, people used to say, like, when we're playing, they would say, ah, when we never thought you'll make it. So what do you mean? Nobody shoot out to me that you were prematurely born. So when I think about Moren Lene, who made it from the first moment of life, and then was like, wow, dude, you've been trained and be prepared for anything else. So in my life, I've came across almost all challenges or all experience of life. I've never only faced death, but all whatever people are struggling with and everything, like to my side, it became like, um, I'm, I'm an instrument, I'm, I've been through it. I've mm -hmm. been through, to be honest, I've been through almost everything in my life. That's where along the life I started teaching people about life. From, from when I was 10 up to until when I was 15, what I was doing before taking decisions, I'll stand firm and say, Maren Lene, we are doing this together. We're choosing this way. And along the way, don't look back. The only time when you have to look back is when you look back, appreciate yourself. You look back and you'll be proud of your own self. That's what happened. And then when, when growing up, 
I was always surrounded by people, friends and, and people whom we used to play with and everything. But one thing about me was that I always have to be there and play my own unique role. I used to be a different person. I never knew or understood why. Because like, I, I will always have my own perspectives. So that's been also guided by the challenges I've been through in life, which I never even see them as challenges. I saw them as advantage for me to can explore or for me to can learn or for me to can use them as possibility of being somewhere else. So uh, my uniqueness or the, the different roles I had to can play being guided by the experience was to me, like that's why now I'm saying I'm a proud product of a loss. From the moment I lost my dad, sure. I have to understand, admit that the guy who wished to be there for me is no more. It's no and more. And that's the guy whom I wanted to be. After um, the moment my dad passed on the next year, I had to start uh, staying with mom and my stepdad. Even though my mom and my stepdad wanted to play a role in my life, mm. unfortunately. It remember, wasn't the same. I've played my own role to can set boundaries. I never wanted anyone to play any role, any father's role in my life. Why? Who knows? Maybe they're doing it out of advantage. I don't want to be a person who... Uh, one thing about me, I knew about me that I'll be a guy who have to be there on stage and tell people, this is me, this is what we can do best. So I didn't want to feel like I owe people so I why, why couldn't you give your mom and your stepdad a chance? Like, were you protecting yourself? Um, did you not feel that it was genuine? My, that, that moment when, when my mom and uh, my stepdad decided mm. to can play a role onto my life, mm. unfortunately, remember, after my dad passed on, mm. I stood firm and drew boundaries and said to myself, it's fine. From now on, people will start to can take advantage. Some will be doing it willingly, you understand? But irregardless, or you are there for it or you are there advantageously, unfortunately, I've learned to stood my grounds. I never wanted to change it. What I said to my mom was like, I understand, but please, I've got... By that time, my mom already have um, uh, uh, my younger uh, sisters. And then I said, please do it for them, not for me. Oh, she can't say, you can't. I said, no. Unfortunately, you have to you understand. Yeah. So she, they wanted, but to my side, I said to my mm. side, since I decided with Morendini that, dude, we are gone, we are gone. This is the boundary. We don't have to do it for the other person. So you basically accepted that I, I don't admitted, have parents. I never ad you are accepted. Like, I don't I admitted. have parents, and that's it. Guess what? After realizing that my dad is gone, I look at my mom, she's a distance unto me, she's at her own place. When I realized the way she got that place as a way out of mm. the, the, the situation at home, mm. I never wanted to be there as if now it's my mom and myself, you understand? I wanted just to be there because it's fine. She wants to protect me and embrace me. It's fine, I understand, after my loss. But here's the thing, I'm not part and parcel of her side. Mm. I have my own way. I've got my own role. So by doing it so... But you're still a child. Your own way, how? Guess what? I found myself at the age of 10. Finding yourself is like listening to your consciousness. Sure. I had to listen to my consciousness. Whatever I had to do, I had to do with myself. And not doing favors. So from that moment, that's where I, I, I learned to, 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 to be um, a, a self. Yes. To self-depend on my yes. own. He, he, he accepted that he's I alone. Admit, I never accepted. I admitted. He admitted yeah. that he's, he's alone. So he decided to take the journey alone. Remember, my mom couldn't do this. Let's say my mom now, she have her own place, maybe not without her husband or on, on her own. Mm -hmm. Though she couldn't do so. My mom was, was, in, was in waking by that time. So after the passing of my dad, I look at, okay, this side, I'm empty. My dad is gone. Look this side. She can't do it, my mom. I better be on my own. I admitted this is the loss. I have to adapt on the loss. Why? There is a change. Someone is missing. I have to learn now to adapt. Remember, life goes on. I have to do, do as how life does. So what did you do? Where did you stay? What did you eat? How did you manage I stayed life? with mom, but I never wanted her to can do things mm, for me. They okay. had, she, I never wanted to be a priority. Yes, yes. You understand? Yes, I yeah. never wanted to be a priority to my mom. 
because beside that, I don't know, like remember whatever she will be doing, she won't be doing out of her own everything. She still have to rely on her husband. How, how sure is it? How, what if uh, you will be doing out of favor just to can maintain their relationship? And then in the future, then when Marindeni, remember, I still have got my father's family. What's going to happen yeah, when I still need to, to move back that. now to my dad's family? How will it be? <sighs> so along it, you know what it happened? I figured out between 2005 and 2011, I was staying with mom. 2010, my grand granny, we used to be an obstacle between me and my father's family. 2010, she passed on. When she passed on, I'm staying with mom, ne? Mm -hmm. And then when she passed on, this is what happened. Mom told me, like, um, um, you have to prepare uh, your little sisters, and then this is what they're going to wear in, in for for the um, mm. funeral, everything. Okay. Um, I never even set a foot on during funeral preparation. It's, it's not even far away, like, we can see from my mom's place to we can even see each other, but I never been there. So... I decided it was Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. I prepared everyone, and then I let them go. Guess what? There was cricket match which was playing that day. <laughs> I decided not to go to the funeral. Hey, I watched and the watch cricket. cricket. <gasps> My mom came sure. back later on. Sure. Why didn't you? I said no, nothing. You know what I figured out? My mom forgot. So they forgot. Like um, the very same person who is now passed on. She's the person who denied me to go pay the last respect to my dad. So I figured out that my mom forgot. Yes, it's fine. And also the family forgot. But I yeah. can't forget. Yes. And then I, I was just afraid to let her know the truth that I, I can't go bury someone who can't come to my funeral though. So you, mm. never, you never forgave your grandmother? I never forgot her. I but, never forgive but did you forgive. ever have a conversation with your grandmother to say, why did you not let me bury my father? That conversation nope. never happened. No, nope. we never even. From the moment I excused myself from living with them, and like I was just a part-time guy who's gonna just go there at some times, because I never valued it. I never, even after a long time, like now mm. my mom's younger sisters are married and everything. And she, she will just meet at some point along the street. She'll be like, you don't even come, blah, 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 blah. And then, ah, you know what, ah, I'll come. That's it. You know what once happened the other day? I was, I was with these friends of mine. We're just from playing soccer by mm. the grounds and everything. So as as bulk of guys who were walking, passing by. So she's somewhere there's with the other greens, they were busy drinking to dumb with it and everything. She said, come this side. I went, like, I'm a villager boy. Just come and kneel down. And, uh, you know what happened? Those other friends of mine, they're waiting for me to can just greet and we go, you understand? Yeah. Just went there and kneel down. And, uh, as polite as I was, she grabbed me. Sure. She said, you don't even come to my place, you no longer, like now, because your dad passed on, now my, your mom, everyone is taking advantages over you. All those uh, other grannies who were there said, don't even do that to him. Mm. He's right by not coming to your place. You used to mistreat him. And then I stood up, my friends are laughing at sure. me, I started crying and then I carry on and go. Then after she passed on, I never even went there. So here's the thing, I have now a problem. Like, So, so did you go to a funeral or did you not? You didn't. I never, up to, even from the preparation until the end of everything. I remember they, they, they even took <laughs> um, the record, the funeral, everything and everything. Mm. So lately, this is what happened. After a funeral, that was 2010. Yeah, that was 2010. And then lately that year, remember what I've just told you now that myself moving from my stepdad's place to my father's place permanently, that won't happen from me where I was, isn't it? Mm. So now I have to figure out a way out. I'm not, uh, like, my father's, uh, my stepdad's side wanted best to can do best for me. Like, they even promised me to, like, after matric, we'll take you to school and everything. And I knew they very, they mean it because, like, uh, the, the, their kids are professionals, they, they are okay. financially stable. This is your stepdad. Yes, that's okay. my stepdad okay. and everyone. Even my mom, I remember my mom, we sat down, she was like to me like, um, like uh, uh, your dad will do this and this and this for you, we want you. I said, mom, you know what? I'm sorry, I can't. 
Mm-hmm. You know what's in my mind? I want to go and have a relationship with my dad's family. But even though from my side to can uh, walk away from my mom's place to my father's dad, it never even raised an issue. They understood it, but mm. my, I need to go there. So after I, uh, uh, my grand granny passed on, I, you know what I did? Mm. I went back and stayed with them again. Your father's family? No, my mom's family. Oh, your mom's mm. family. I went back to stay with them. And then uh, we had family meeting. Like They were like, you can't go there. I said, no, I have to go. They never understood. Do you know why? Mm. It's a way out from my granny's place. Mm. I can easily go to my dad's place. The person oh. who was the obstacle is not there. Mm. But for me to leave my dad's place or my mom's place to go there directly is the disrespect. Said, yes. I didn't yes. want that because like, how's going to be my mom's relationship okay. now? Yes. Because <coughs> your mom's married on. now. Yes. Mm. So from there now, they will say, no, we, 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 we raised his uh, son. Now he's able to be on his own. Then now he left. No. Because obviously, you know, he's talking from when you stay at the villages. Yes. Because someone might be watching and thinking, but yes. why, not? why not? But when you when you stay in the villages, like rules are different. Perfect, you understand? Perfect. Because mm. your mom is married and she's she's no longer with your dad, you can't leave from her marital home to, to your dad's exactly. That's so disrespect. It's disrespect. So you had to so move had to, to your find a way out. maiden family yes. for you to be able to just go to your that's father's. The pass. That's yes. the pathway. That's the bridge. I can't even mm. just fly from and there directly. Mm-mm. It's going to cost chaos. She might lose mm. her only marriage. Remember, she used that one as a way out to have independence mm. and freedom. She got it. Now I can't be a person to just come and distract everything mm. just for my own sake. And then I went back to the family now. Now we're staying together. When we get there, it's only my granny. Um, that's my mom's mom. Because the grand granny, that's the one who was an obstacle by that time. Um, my, my, my granny, the one who gave birth to my mom, she was like part-time home because she used to stay in Gauteng, waking and everything. Mm-hmm. So now it's, um, it's myself back with the, I'm, I'm now living with the same aged um, mom's younger sister mm-hmm. and the last born of the family. For a year, the treatment was fine. After that, I was doing my grade 11 and 12. The situation became back to normal now. Mm-hmm. Um, the mistreating and everything went back. But guess what? I was fully prepared because I'm, <laughs> I've, I'm already yeah, from... Like, I, I know where I'm going. You understand? So I made it to grade 11 and 12. After that, I made it uh, with my metric. And then I had to apply for school, everything. Um, um, TEF approved me. And then now they need funds for registration fee. By that time, that was 3.5. I got a letter on Monday, due date is on Friday. I stood, I was like, dude, you can't make it. I had to admit by the time. I remember some few family members from my mom's side, they said, no, we can offer you. I said, don't. I'm fine. I'm enough. I have just to leave and go stay with my uh, father's family. Because one thing I've learned from my father's family, they believed in giving a person a stage for them to play their role. My mom's family, where she's married, they believe unto doing everything for you. They wanted to take me to school. They wanted mm. to find me. They wanted to do everything for me. I never wanted that. So, so now, did you go to school? Nope. Here's the so thing. You, you refused yeah. the offer. I refused the offer. And you went to go stay at your father's family. Uh, no, by that time because it was um, after metric. My father's family, my aunt told mm. me, okay, it's fine. Remember, your dad used to stay in Pretoria, so your dad have um, house there. Now you have to go. Stay there and be on your own. That's one thing I liked about my father's family. They would just give you a chance, opportunity to play your own role. Then they gave me a space. I came 2014 and then I started be on my own. Mm-hmm. Then this morning, lady, 20 years of age, I started working. I was the youngest guy in the company, my first company. I was the youngest guy in the village to be working. I was the, like, uh, I was playing a different role. I was on my own. I failed to be on my own. I remember I even played the song, was that by Like You Do It, on my own. It was truly <laughs> speaking everything about me. I'm now on my yeah. own. I'm able to do things on my own. Sure. And I'm that for own. you meant freedom? It's a freedom now. <laughs> I can now direct myself to where I want. I have mm. also goals. I have also had wishes because like along the... Uh, uprising of me, all I was doing it was fantasizing. Sure. 
for me to get rid of the experience I was going through, I had just to can fantasize. Whenever I'm with people, I will be the only person who's talking. Why? I don't want to face the reality by that time because it hurts. Even though people, some people ask me, but why Azrad? Why? I admit it. So I became myself. I started waking. It's me now waking. The family now is trying to be in Azrad. Don't even worry about me. Now um, I, I've got a way out. Now I'm shouting. I can't randomly just drive to Venda. Eh? Mm. And now I have freedom. I can do. Where I am now, nobody knows about me. Nobody knows what I do. Nobody knows what I have. The only everything to theirs is just surprise. I, we still stay together even now. Whenever I drive home, I still go to the very same people. And how's your relationship with your mother now? Um, about me and my mom, the thing where like I can <coughs> say like, do I have to say it in this way? Like I've, I've with, I've letter there we throw from my side. Mm -hmm. Like not to get like to me when I when I when when whenever I'm wherever I am I will just used to say like no she have kids she mustn't uh, account me as as them she must just say Morinden is alone she mustn't know about me a lot and everything I must just be the person no. to take a good care okay. of her. Morinden is so mm -mm. stubborn eh? <laughs> no I think you know what yeah. I think. Um, just listening to your story, like I 100% get the trauma, mm. the hurt and the pain that got you to this place because you're just protecting your heart from being rejected, from, you know, from getting hurt and from, from doing all those things. But did you ever get help, some sort of therapy, mm. you know, maybe because I think that's important and you can be 25, you can be 35, you. you are still your mother's child. I do understand you cannot that withdraw from that. I do understand that one. But here's the thing. Um, I've never been through the counseling or all the, those things. I mean, as ever since it was myself, the only thing which gave me courage or the way out doing everything, it was all about voices I used to listen from people who never met me. Like, I can just tune the radio now. Whatever topic they will be discussing, it have got a lot to do with me. Whatever I just grab from people talking, it have got a lot to do with me. You understand? So I'm not saying like we don't have a relationship with mom. We do, mm. but like uh, she don't have to do anything for me. It is me who have a lot to do for her. I, I don't yeah. know if you, you figure it out. Mm. Mm. So and then do you go to church? I lastly went to church 10 years ago. 10 years ago? Yes. Wow. Hectic. But I think for sure. me, like I really do feel that there's a lot of healing to be done mm. like the younger you um you need to revisit that and really heal from those traumas and hurt um from being robbed of mourning your own dad burying him having a relationship with him staying with your mom all these things i mean it, they, they really lot. do build up but they're there with you like your adult self right now that doesn't mean those mm. issues are gone. They're yeah. still there. Mm. Yes, you are independent. You can you can live your own life and be free and do whatever. But it, it nothing has changed if you don't deal with it because you're gonna get married and those issues are gonna come back. Um, to my side, I think like about healing from those things. I I can say yes, I've healed because to such an extent now the family, my mom's family, I've. I've forgiven everyone, but I've never forgotten. I used to, um, that I remember, but the first time when I uploaded one of them video, I, I published my biography mm. on, my, on my YouTube saying like, this is me. I don't want people to lie about me when I'm gone. You understand? Mm. I shoot out everything about my life story. And then the first call I got was the same age, uh, my mom's younger sister. She mm. apologized. I said, I forgive you. I forgive everyone, but I've never forgotten. So the more you keep uh, uh, myself closer to you, you just remind me of everything. Just keep me, leave me the way I am now, mm -hmm. and then it's fine. Mm -hmm. Keeping a distance between us, it's fine. When I need to be with you, I'll be with you. But don't force things, cause yes. you remind me of everything. Yeah, now. You so to be honest, I forgot journey. everyone and everything. So that's sure. why, like through my life experience and everything, since um. By that time, I started um, uh, doing the e-healing companies, becoming the driver and everything, only to find out that people who, whom I give a ride, those are people who are experiencing the very same things I've experienced long time ago, and I figured out the way out. Then now I stood firm, like it sparked me to such an extent, I wanted to help everyone now. So how to can, 
not sit back and 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 uh, determine and silence silence everything and to can come back bounce back to life because I did manage to bounce back and everything because all those mm. challenges I managed to can tune them to be opportunities for me to can explore. That's the mm. thing. So is that how then you became a life coach? Yes, I became a life coach because now the thing is I wasn't even aware of what I'm doing. Um, someone's gonna just come show up to me and say, hey, dude, this is what I'm going through. To me, it's not no. Oh, just ah, simple thing. This is what you can do best, and then they do best. Uh, along the time, they'll just give me a call, dude. Oh, it worked. And then I started helping people in that way. Some of my riders started calling me again, like, like, how did you know about this thing? And now people have questions about me. Mm -hmm. And then I started like, okay, it's fine. Let me just write something down. I came across some cards somewhere around by the school that has been around, uh, around since you know. mm. um, Since I'm a guy who believes in his own thinking and, and perspective, I started writing quotes. So when uh, riders jump into my car and then we start, I start, I'm going to just greet you. How's you? How's your day? How's the year treating you? How's the life? Then you're going to, oh, life is up and down and everything. I said, no, nope. it mustn't be like that. It must be as how we're flowing now, I as driver. Then I will tune people, I will just motivate people with them and everything. Only to find out that some few of my closest friends along the life now um, from last year, mm. they managed to give me calls like, dude, you are our role model. It can't be. How? They said, um, the life you're living, mm. it's a unique life. I, I was in tears around early this year in May. Mm. My uh, little sister, she told me, do you know I'm doing grade 12 now and I'm an author? My first book to write is going to be your story of, uh, the story of your own life. Yeah. So what is the door you're going to write about me because you're still young enough to... She said, I've been observing, searching about you. So mm -hmm. then I knew, like, I have to look back be, uh, from the beginning of Marindiana to today. I was like, really? This is the story. That's why in 2014 I started writing a book because, like, I spent, like, close to five months stuck, not knowing what to do because I couldn't go to school... Uh, when my aunt offered me to can come to Houting, then my mom's family never allowed me, although. And then I started writing a book from the age of five until that day. After that, I closed that book. That's the book I'm yeah. going to carry on now with, the story Please of my own life. Please do carry on with the book. <laughs> mm. Please continue to write it. Sure. sure. What a story, right? Yeah. Very different to to what sure. what we've had before. Mm. Uh, but I think there's so many themes to be explored with that, and it, I think a lot of people will relate to it because mm. <clears throat> the loss, you know, upbringing, parents, child abuse, <sighs> you know, like being mistreated, family values, mixed mixed families blended families father's side mother's side i mean it's mm. it's a lot i know it's um, a lot. but i'm glad that you you are here to tell your story and um that you've overcome that you've forgiven and that you've moved on because i think that is very very important yeah. because w sorry wh which whose surname are you using your mom's side or your dad's side um uh when i was born mom and dad they used the very same morality but okay. um as broad as as the son name is, they have got nothing relating, but they are just both Marauds. My mom's family and my dad's family, they are from Marauds' family, but ah, they're hey. not related. Wow. That's how it is. With, yes, with so I think it made things less complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, and, and they're not relatives? Nope, they are far away from each other. That's the thing about Venda, it's too huge to such an extent. You see, I'm Marendeni. Yeah. Now I can name my kids after my my name as the surname, I can say they are Marendel. Then only to find that we share different surname, but we are from the very same surname. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That is all we have for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode. Thank you so much, Mr. Moraudzi. Sure. Okay. I am looking forward to what you have to say in the comment section yeah. below. What lessons have you taken out from this episode? And um, are you are you in, in connection to the story? Are you relating to anything? Mm. Which part of you did it hit the most? Because for me, yeah. it's definitely with the, with the conjoined families, you know, being raised by the one parent and not having a relationship with the other. Yeah. So I'm interested to hear what you have to say. 
Let's meet in the comment section below as Eno said. And we will see you on the next one. May the good God continue to bless you. Thank you so much for sharing your story <laughs> from you. myself, Millicent. And myself, Innocent. And of course, our guest, Morandeni Murawudzi. And our wonderful crew behind the scenes who make it all happen. It's bye for now.